chapter 8, and verse number 5 is where I want to begin reading. Or verse number 4, I'm sorry. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Verse number 17. Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Amen. What a revival. Amen. Our pastor's been preaching to us and talking to us about the shift that's coming. Amen. There's a, there's a, there's a feeling in the air of, of gears fixing to shift. Amen. But that begins somewhere. Amen. Revival begins somewhere. Amen. That's what I want to preach to you about tonight is the beginning of revival. The beginning of revival. Would you stretch your hands this way? Ask the Lord to help us. Lord, we need your help. Lord, we thank you for your presence that we've already felt in this service. God, how your spirit has already been moving and speaking tonight. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would put, Lord, your final stamp of approval on this service tonight. Lord, anoint the word of God. Anoint your messenger tonight, Lord. Anoint our ears to hear and our hearts to receive what you would have us to receive. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory for it. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You can be seated tonight. If we were to take a vote of a show of hands, we would pro it would probably be pretty close to unanimous that we would say that we want to see a great revival in our church. Amen. Would you say that tonight? Amen. When, it, when the end of time comes for Faith Tabernacle and the church is raptured out of here, we want to stand before God and say that we were a church in revival. Amen. We would want to be known as a church, and we are known as a church where things happen, a, a church where things take place. But, and if the Lord were to delay His coming for another 50 years, we would want to be known as we were part of one of the greatest revivals that ever came to Faith Tabernacle. Amen? Amen. Stay with me a little bit tonight. But every great revival that you, that you look at in history and that you look at in, in, in that has taken place has had a beginning. In 1900, a Bible school instructor by the name of Charles Parham instructed his students to search the Word of God and to come back and tell him what they found to be the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Those students went and researched it and they came back and they all said with the same answer, they said that when the Holy Ghost was poured out on the early church, in each instance the proof was the same that they spoke with other tongues. Amen. And in a watch night service on December 31st, 1900, the Topeka, Kansas revival was born. Amen. The Azusa Street revival, we're all familiar with that, the Azusa the street revival started when a, when a preacher got down and put his head in a crate and began to seek God and ask God to send revival. And, and, the, and revival came. It doesn't matter which revival that you point to in history. It had a beginning. Amen. That's what I want to preach tonight about the beginning of revival. As we read here in the book of Acts chapter 8, we find that the church of Jerusalem is experiencing a time of difficulty, a time of trial. And, and even just in the previous chapter, we find that Stephen was martyred as one of the deacons. He became the first martyr of the early church. And then at the beginning of chapter 8, the Bible tells us that there was great persecution against the church that was at Jerusalem. You know the story of how Saul of Tarsus was persecuting the church. 
I don't have to explain that to you, but it was a time of difficulty. It was a time of of trial. And I haven't come to preach doom and gloom tonight, but I feel, Brother Marino, that there are difficult days ahead for the church. Amen. It's not always going to be a bed of roses, but there's difficulty ahead. Paul wrote to Timothy and said that in the last days, perilous times would come. Amen. All it takes, even in recent days, We have heard of the perilous times that we are living in today. But I want you to know that that even in the midst of the church's difficulty, there was a revival uh, that was taking place in Jerusalem. Amen. And, and, And as that persecution, we heard about it a while back, Brother Stidham was preaching about it. About the persecution that, that drove them out of, some, out of Jerusalem uh, and, and that revival began to spread. But let me preach to you a little bit but, because I want you to notice the first thing that Philip did when he went down to Samaria. The Bible says, and Philip went down to Samaria and started a soup kitchen. No. Started a jail ministry. No. Took up an offering. No. And those things are great. But the Bible says that Philip went down into Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. Amen. I want to tell you tonight that Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ is the beginning of revival. Can I tell you that every revival begins with a reviver uh, and his name is Jesus. Uh, But we as a church world, we have gotten away from preaching Christ. uh, And the result is that we have gotten away from revival. Uh, but Philip didn't go down there and preach his agenda Philip didn't go down there and preach the do's and don'ts of church law Uh, it does not even appear that he went down and preached on the Holy Ghost though he may have uh, but the Bible tells us that he went down and he preached Christ to them Uh, but can I tell you tonight church that there the lost and dying world uh, outside the four walls walls of this sanctuary uh, that they don't need another twelve program. Uh, They don't need another self-help book. Uh, What they need to know uh, is about a Savior that died for them uh, and shed His blood for them. uh, And they need us to be the church to preach Christ to them. Amen. Revival begins with Jesus. Have you ever got caught up in complexity of the Word of God? What do you mean by that? Sometimes you read a verse and, and you read things and have you ever skipped over something because you really didn't understand it? Oh, let's be honest. Amen. When you get about the first chapter of Matthew and you get into all those genealogies, I've skipped a couple of those. Mainly because I couldn't pronounce them. But sometimes we have a tendency to get caught up in the abstract or the complexities of the Word of God. But sometimes we need to go back to the basics. We need to go back to the simplicity of the Gospel. Amen. I've come tonight for one reason. And that's to try to mirror Philip's message and preach Christ. Amen. Preach Jesus. An older man of God, I heard him tell a young preacher one time, he said, son, I found in my ministry that whenever I would get into the pulpit, if I would begin to preach Christ, it was just a matter of time before he would show up. Amen. I don't know how you feel, but I feel like the reason that the church world today and churches of today aren't experiencing the revivals that God has for them is because we have lost our awe of Christ. We have lost that awesomeness. We no longer sense just how awesome He is to us. Uh, We no longer believe that His power and His miracles are for today. Uh, We no longer believe that He has revival uh, with our name on it. We've come to the place in the church world uh, that coming to church is no longer about Christ and what he's done or what he can do Uh, but coming to church has become about us Uh, it's become about how we feel uh, how we respond and how we want the service to go Uh, but I believe with all my heart 
that if we could get back to the place uh, that if we want to see a true revival uh, and the greatest revival we could imagine uh, then we must give absolute honor and reverence back to Christ uh, and to His presence. It's time uh, for us as the church uh, to return Christ to the place of exaltation. Amen. Jesus said, if I be lifted up I will draw all men unto me. And it's time for us to take the spotlight spotlight off of ourselves and get it back on Him. Amen. The Bible doesn't tell us exactly what Philip said, but he evidently bragged on Jesus a little bit. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I tell you tonight, friend, that whatever you have need of in this service, uh, Jesus Christ is the answer. Uh, Amen. If you are bound by drugs, uh, He's the deliverer. Uh, Amen. If you're sick in your body, uh, He is the healer. Uh, Amen. If you need to be saved, uh, He is a Savior. Hallelujah. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. uh, He is still the baptizer. Uh, Amen. Jesus Christ is the answer uh, to every problem that the human race faces. Amen. You're probably wondering right now, Brother Dathan, what, what does this have to do with revival? Amen. Philip went down there and it says that he preached Christ to them. But I want you to notice that as Philip began to preach Christ to them, there was some things, Brother Marino, that began to happen. There was some things that began to take place and the miracles began to follow. The miracles began to happen. Amen. Too many times we want God to do miracles uh, so that we can tell what Jesus has done. Amen. But the opposite was true at Samaria because Philip began to tell what Jesus could do uh, and then the miracles began to follow. Uh, Why is it? I'll tell you why. Because Jesus uh, Christ is the beginning of revival. Amen. But I want to point you back to what takes place in verse number 7, verse number 8. See, when we begin to preach Christ, we, when we begin to lift Him up, amen, we begin to experience revival and things begin to happen. Amen. The first thing that we see here is that demons were subject and cast out by the power of God. Verse number 7 says, For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed of them. As Philip began to preach to the multitude, uh, as he began to reveal and began to exalt Christ, the deliverer, uh, hell itself was not happy. Uh, Listen, as we read the narratives of the gospel as well, uh, as the book of Acts, we cannot fail to notice uh, the prevalence of demonic demonic possession, uh, demonic activity. Uh, We cannot help but believe uh, that those afflictions are common in all ages. Uh, We easily enough we we, uh, diagnose the bodily afflictions uh, for what they are, but we tend to ignore uh, the parallel afflictions of the soul. Uh, We tend not to believe in demons anymore. uh, And even if we do, we discount their activity. Modern psychology has done much uh, to turn our attention away uh, from demonic activity. We have so many other uh, more plausible explanations uh, today for abnormal and erratic human behavior. Uh, We have phobias and we have psychosis uh, and we have syndromes. Uh, We find causes of our depressions uh, or distortions in some childhood experience uh, or traumatic event. Now, I'm not one... uh, that says there's a demon behind every rock. Uh, But listen to me, I think we may be much surprised uh, to see how real that they are. uh, And in the truth we're told to discover uh, that demons are just as active today uh, as they were in the first century. Uh, Listen, with the things that we as a society uh, have opened our minds up to uh, with vampires uh, and all of those things uh, and zombies uh, listen to me uh, then we as a church must be prepared to face uh, 
a more visible presence of the enemy. Hallelujah. But when revival comes and when things begin to happen, then there will people that be people that come through those doors off of the streets and some of those people are going to be full of the devil. They're going to be full of hell. They're going to be under the influence of satanic spirits. But a church that is prayed up and a church that's full of the Holy Ghost and a church that's on fire for God has nothing to fear when the enemy raises head. Why? Because we're following Jesus. And Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Amen. When we preach Christ, demons are still brought into subjection to His authority. Amen. But the second thing that we see here is not only demons were cast out, but sickness and disease were healed by the power of God. It says, and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. Now that word palsy used there in our text refers to various types of paralysis. Amen. But it's also used for other different types of disease and infirmities. Amen. But what that tells me is that as, as Philip began to preach Christ... As Philip began to preach, the healer disease and infirmity uh, began to lose its hold on some folks. Uh, oh, there are some sitting under the sound of my voice tonight uh, that know what it is to battle with sickness. Uh, you know what it is to face infirmity. Uh, you know what it is to struggle uh, to get into the house of God uh, because of the sickness that you feel. Uh, you know what it is to feel like that woman. Uh, the Word of God said I had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years uh, and it says that she was bowed together uh, and could no wise lift up herself uh, but verse 13 says that Jesus uh, laid his hands on her uh, and immediately she was made straight uh, and glorified God uh, church can I tell you tonight uh, that I'm preaching a the same Jesus uh, who is not only the deliverer uh, but he is the healer uh, he can take a negative doctor's report uh, and turn it into a positive testimony uh, he can take a condition uh, that baffles the medical community uh, and turn it into a praise report uh, oh come on now uh, I've come to tell you tonight that he is still uh, the healer hallelujah Jesus is still the great physician uh, Jesus is still the creator uh, and the restorer of the human body uh, listen when we begin to preach Christ uh, sickness cannot stay hallelujah when Philip began to preach Christ to him the sick were healed amen I've heard him tell the stories I've never been there amen but I've heard him tell the stories of the north side assembly amen sister Martin knows about it Amen. But they would talk about the crutches and the wheelchairs and the different equipment that was in that church. Amen. When the ambulance would pick somebody up, they would say, do you want to go to the hospital? Uh, or do you want to go over to the north side assembly? Uh, listen, why? Because those people knew that that was a church. Uh, they knew that was a place where the healer was. Uh, I'll tell you what I'd like to see. I'd like to see revival break out uh, and sweep through our church. Uh, that people would come to our services from miles around uh, because they heard about a Jesus uh, at Faith Tabernacle Assembly of God uh, that could heal, uh, that could touch, uh, that could minister to them. Amen. I need to hurry. But the third thing that I want you to notice as Philip began to preach Christ, the Bible says that the whole city experienced great joy. Listen, we look around at our city we look around at our society and great joy is probably not the word or the phrase that comes to mind. Amen. In our society, depression and despair is such a prominent thing. Even in the house of God, the mully grubs uh, is where most people seem content to live. Uh, it's like the lady that stood up in testimony service and said, The devil's been on my back all week, bless his holy name. Amen. That's humorous. 
Amen. But that's where we find ourselves many times. Uh, I understand what she was coming to say, what she was trying to say. Uh, but amen, we ought to come into the house of God with rejoicing. Uh, if anybody's got a reason to worship, uh, if anybody's got a reason to be joyful, uh, it ought to be the people of God. Uh, listen, the reason uh, that there's no joy in our society uh, is because we have lost our joy in the church. Uh, but his or her joy uh, that has set the Christian apart from the world. Uh, because see, joy is not happiness. Uh, amen. Happiness is, uh, is affected by circumstances. Uh, amen. But joy cannot be affected uh, by those same circumstances. Uh, that's why Job uh, could say the Lord giveth uh, and the Lord taketh away, uh, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, it was a joy that allowed him to say that. Uh, it was joy that allowed Nehemiah, uh, after building the walls, to say the joy of the Lord is your strength. Uh, it was joy uh, that allowed Polycarp to stand at the stake uh, and say these years have I served him uh, and he's never done me anything but good. Uh, why can I turn my back on him now? Uh, listen to me friend, make no mistake about it. Uh, when you begin to preach Christ, uh, when you begin to preach Jesus, uh, He will show up uh, and He will bring joy. Amen. Amen. There's some in this service tonight that have lost their joy. You've lost your joy. Amen. I want to tell you, I'll preach Christ to you tonight. Amen. The restorer of joy. Amen. Sweetheart, come give me a song. Amen. The last thing that we see here in our text, Philip preached Christ. Devils are cast out. The sick are healed. Joy comes to the city. Amen. But when you read down in verse 13, see that the church at Jerusalem heard what was going on. And they sent Peter and John down there to investigate. And they come down and they find this revival that's taking place. And they find all these things that are happening. But I like verse 17 uh, because God can always top himself. Amen. It says that Peter and John went down to Samaria and laid their hands on them. Uh, and they received the Holy Ghost. Uh, listen, you may not see a connection uh, between Philip preaching Christ uh, and the Samaritans receiving the Holy Ghost. Uh, but let me tell you, Philip was there on the day of Pentecost uh, when the Holy Holy Ghost was poured out uh, and one of the qualifications uh, for his being chosen as a deacon uh, is that he be full of the Holy Ghost. Listen, uh, when you experience the baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, you will not be able to keep it to yourself. Uh, but Jesus said that when the Spirit have come, uh, he said he would preach Christ. Uh, that's what the Holy Ghost does is he points us to Christ. Uh, I don't know how you see it, but I kind of imagine Philip uh, getting about halfway through his sermon huh? and then he starts telling him that Jesus said uh, he said that he would send us another comforter uh, there before he ascended into heaven uh, and maybe he started getting a little bit excited uh, and he said we went in that upper room and we tarried uh, and we waited uh, and uh, there was only 120 of us up in that upper room uh, but can I tell you that after tarrying uh, and I got to be there in that upper room uh, when the baptizer started baptizing hallelujah Listen, I can't preach Christ as the deliverer. Uh, I can't preach Christ as the healer. Uh, I can't preach Christ as the joy giver uh, without preaching Christ as the baptizer. Uh, listen, I know that there are some uh, in this service tonight that have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But I want to tell you tonight that as sure as He can save you, as sure as He can heal you, as sure as He can deliver you, He can baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I told somebody the other day, they was praying when they got done after service. I told them, you hang in there. Tonight will be a good night. Amen. They went back. And they started praying some more. Amen. They're going to get it. Amen. They're going to get it. Amen. But every time we come into the house of God, Brother Stamps, the baptizer's waiting to baptize. 
Amen. The Savior's waiting to save. Amen. The healer's waiting to heal. But revival will come when Christ is our focus. Amen. I was in a place of business recently. Getting some work done on my vehicle. And while I was in there, this lady came in. And you could tell that she had lived a rough life. You could tell, Brother Marsh, she had been through some things. And I heard her telling one of the guys there about all the problems that she was facing. All the things that were going on in her life. She made this statement. She said, I've tried everything and it is hopeless broke my heart brother brown because I knew she was wrong I sat down there I was sitting there she sat down chair a couple chairs over we was the only ones waiting Brother Williams, I got to tell that lady. I said, ma'am, I don't know you. And you don't know me. I said, but one thing I know, and I said, I don't mean this disrespectful, but one thing I know just by hearing is you've had some problems. She kind of rolled her eyes and laughed. And I said, ma'am, I just want you to know, I don't believe you've tried everything, and you're sure not hopeless. She looked at me like I had just stepped off of Mars. She said, are you? I said, I know somebody that can help you. She said, are you a psychologist? I said, no, I'm crazy, but I'm not a psychologist. I said, I'm a minister of the gospel. And I have a friend, his name is Jesus. And I said, whatever your problems are, I know that he can help you. And right there, while I was getting my oil changed, I was able to preach Christ to a lady who had no hope. I was able to give her hope. I want to tell you there are millions and thousands of people outside the walls of this sanctuary just like her that need somebody to tell them about Jesus. Hallelujah, stand with me all across the house. Amen. I agree with my pastor. There's a shift coming. There's a greater revival on the way. But you know what will start that revival? Is when you and I begin to preach Christ. Brother Nathan, I'm not a preacher. Oh, but you are. I said, oh, but you are. Every time you walk into the, your place of employment, you're preaching Christ. 
Every time you young people step into the public school, you're preaching Christ. Amen. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your presence tonight. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. Amen. As I was thinking about this message, praying about it, I had to get away. I had to get in a corner. And I had to bury my face in the carpet. And I had to say, Jesus, I want you to be number one. No, I wasn't backslid, but we become busy. We become consumed with things that we have to do, responsibilities we have to fulfill. But this is the thought came to me and I'm going to leave it with you we're going to come and pray as I was driving home the thought came to me what if I had not been willing to preach Christ to a lady at the automotive shop And how many people do we come in contact with every day, just like her, that need somebody to preach Christ to them? Amen. I know this is simple tonight. Amen. But if we're going to see revival, we've got to preach Christ. Amen. Would you join me in these altars?